first, Darren Rose. Uh, I, was in, uh, I was in Amsterdam a while ago. Came back and I was telling my mother about it. I was telling her about like the red light district. Uh, you know where all like the ladies stand in the doorways and then guys suddenly realize that doorways are fascinating. <laughs> and I'm telling my mom about this and she goes, oh, I could never do that. All the standing. <laughs> really, mom? That's the reason you're not a hooker in Amsterdam? <laughs> Is the standing? She starts just like idly contemplating it. She's like, well, I guess if you're really good at it, you don't stand that much. <laughs> yeah, can we stop having the worst conversation of my life, please? <laughs> and my mom is single, and uh, my parents got divorced a long time ago, so I'm always trying to like, get her to get back out there. And uh, I'm not saying that is a good reason to become a hooker in Amsterdam, but <laughs> I, I got her a Mash.com account, and that has been a nightmare. <laughs> Because <laughs> I had to like help her set up her profile, right? And you know how like, uh, like when your parents ask you to help them out with the computer, you think it's going to take like two seconds and then it turns into like a rabbit hole that descends into the ninth circle of hell? <laughs> so I got to help my mom said, I got to help her like upload the photo. First of all, I got to help her choose the photo because she wants to use a photo that's of her and her dog. And I'm like, you can't do that on a dating site. Everyone's going to think you're crazy. Uh, and my mom wanted to choose the photo based on how good the dog looked. <laughs> So I gotta help her like upload the photo because she doesn't know how to do that. And I gotta help her type out her profile because she doesn't know how to do that. Get it all set up and I'm like, all right, just send a message to a man. And she goes, well, what do I say? And I was like, oh, Christ. That's the rabbit hole. I'm just saying, guys, you don't know the depths of psychological torture until you sat beside your mother, as I have, typing into her Match.com account trying to pick up men for your mother on the internet. Because <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. Like, I mean, I don't want my mom to be alone, but I don't want to be good at this. <laughs> I remember when I was young, uh, I remember the coolest guy in the world to me was my older cousin. I just worshipped him. He was so cool. And I think that maybe that's easy when you're little, like your older cousins are always cool because like they can do, they have powers you don't have, like they can drive and go to McDonald's whenever they want. That's a very magical thing when you're little. And my cousin, he had a mullet and his own Iron Maiden t-shirt with the sleeves cut off. And I was like, how can I replicate this life of success? And I remember the moment when I realized my cousin was the coolest guy on earth. Uh, when I was 13, he was 18, and he took me to a party. It was the first time I'd been to a party that had girls at it. And my cousin realizes this can be like a teachable moment for me, where he can drop some cousin knowledge, because I think when you're an older cousin, younger cousins are just people you just try out advice on. Because if it works out, that's great, and if it doesn't, who gives a shit? I'm not gonna see you at Christmas anyway. So, uh, so he comes over to me and he's like, hey, you know, you know, in a party like this, you're in a bad situation. You know what you do? You solve it. Right? That's not a good party. You get the party started by going over to the stereo and putting on the song, Pump Up the Jam. <laughs> not a solution I would have thought of. This wasn't the year Pump Up the Jam came out or anything. And, uh, and I was just like, it's so weird to see this like statue of coolness just crumble in front of me. Because I had worship. Even at 13, I was like, this guy's an idiot, for sure. <laughs> And he walked over the stereo and he put it on and it worked. I was looking around, everyone was dancing. I looked back, he had a Big Mac in his hands. I was like, that's the coolest guy on earth. <laughs> it's amazing. And uh, my cousin was uh, much cooler than my older brother, uh, in part because my brother spent a substantial portion of my life uh, as a child trying to kill me. Uh, like, you know how you have like those older brothers who like take you under their wing and teach you about life? Uh, I had the kind of older brother who thought it was like his duty to like toughen me up for a vicious, cruel world that I only experienced while he was toughening me up for it. <laughs> like, I've lived a life now. I've been in a bunch of situations. I've never been in like a job interview where at the end of it, they pushed me out of a moving car. <laughs> but when I was 17, I was driving to McDonald's with my brother and he pushed me out of a moving car. Fully, and, I, and I'm like, I'm not here to brag to you. He was driving at the time. Do you realize how embarrassing that is for me? Like, he just, he fully pushed, you realize the physical feat necessary to push somebody, like he had to like reach past me, open the passenger side door and push me out. Passers-by are looking like, what, this guy doesn't have the physical strength to fight off a guy who's also driving? 
And I was, I was fully out. I was just, I was fully out and I was running with my hands on the cement, <laughs> which is worrisome because I don't practice hand running on the treadmill at the gym. I'm like, what do I got? Like a minute and a half before my face catches the pavement? I'm just running as fast as I can, but this is a bad situation. I realize that, but I've been trained for it. So with my foot, I was just trying to reach the stereo and put on pump up the jam. <laughs> All right, you guys were lovely. Thanks so much.